Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you. 
We are waiting the procession. Where's Mr. Nash? Wait, wait.
May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is indeed right that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise you, the unseen God, the Father Almighty, and your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has ransomed us by his death and paid for us the price of Adam's sin. For this is the Passover of that true Lamb of God, by whose blood the homes of all the faithful are hallowed and protected. This is the time when of old you saved our fathers, delivering the people of Israel, leading them from dry shod through the sea. This is the time when Jesus Christ vanquished hell and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the time when all who believe in him are freed from sin and restored to grace and holiness. Most blessed of all time, when heaven is wedded to earth and all creation reconciled to God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this time, accept our sacrifice of praise your church's solemn offering, 
and grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light, for Christ the morning star has risen, never again to set, and is alive and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, 166.
collect for each today, let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemies, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may all forevermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the ministry of the world.
old Romans, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus be baptized in his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that Jesus, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our own self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin. Once for all, the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and live to God in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be God. to God. The gradual hymn, 173. <laughs>
Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the, the father. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. Its appearance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see him. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. But there's something more. 
Is the glass full or not? It's halfway full. Right, it's halfway full and it's? And it's halfway not full. Very good. Yes. Everybody can see this, right? My friends over that side. Yeah, so the glass is half full or half empty. Depends on your perspective, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> and she said, somebody call the police. <laughs> Sorry, I'm crazy. Sorry. One other thing about the glass. So, what is it about the glass now? It's empty. It has a little in the bottom. What does that mean? What does an empty glass mean? Yes, I drank it off. What does the empty glass represent though? I'm going to tell you something more. Not only is it empty, it means it can be filled again. Don't it? It also means you can put something in it to share with somebody who is thirsty. Don't it? Which means you can help somebody in need. So an empty glass is not a bad thing, it's a good thing, even though it's empty. If a people who is tired, you give them water. Amen, that's right. So the empty glass is sort of similar to what we're celebrating today, Easter, because Jesus died on the... Right, remember we, said, we spoke about this? Jesus died on the cross. That's right. But after the cross, something else happened. He went into the tomb, right? After what? Three days he rose again. Very good, and that's what we're celebrating today. So what happened to the tomb? The tomb is empty. But does that mean the end of everything? No. Just like the empty glass, something good can happen because of the empty tomb. Because it's still alive. Amen. Right. The empty tomb means Jesus is still alive. And because he's alive, all of us have hope. All of us can be children of God because Jesus is alive. That's what we celebrate today. Easter is a celebration of Jesus rising from the dead and we call that, we have a special name for that. Resurrection. Very good. So the empty grave means there is a resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead, and all who believe in him shall also rise from the dead to be with him one day. He is with God. He is with God, amen. And he's also with us. Okay? And that's what Easter is about. The resurrection. Jesus is alive and well. All right, thank you. You may go to your seats. When the pastor goes up here, he needs to speak in his hand. <laughs> Certainly, friends, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the basis of the Christian faith. We heard of Mary going to the tomb in our gospel reading. Her experience at the empty tomb is the fulfillment of God's promise. Promise of new life, of a chance for a new start new relationships with humankind and relationships with humanity and God. The Easter story is a story of Jesus, a story about all of us. We are the reason 
Why there is Greek here is Easter? Easter Day is a celebration of hope, direction, purpose, meaning, and community. Because guess what? We're all in this world together, aren't we? We're all in this Jamaica together. But the empty tomb gives us hope. The empty tomb reminds us that while we are in a Jamaica, in a world that is suffering, that is aching, that is bleeding, a world that needs our voices, our actions of love and hope and reconciliation, our presence, and the teachers, the educators among us know the significance and the power of presence, don't you? Yes. 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 It's your celebration also, you know. So, and when you go to class, if your teachers and your students don't talk and they're not happy, so don't make them unhappy up here. Minister William, I will preach till midday if they're not happy. <laughs> No, I'm not doing it. No. Some people have medication to go home and say. So I'm compassionate. Otherwise, it would not. But yes, friends, the power of presence. We are needed in this world because Christ has come to this world and he has said to us, here I am, I'm alive, but I need you, my people, to let the world know that there is hope for all. That there is a God who says, come to me all who are burdened and heavy laden. A God who says, I will not cast out anyone who comes to me. A God who says, I'll be with you even to the end of the age. This is Easter. The God who is present in the world that he loves. And we are assured that wherever we are, and I want every educator to know this in particular. When you go to your school or to your desk, to your work, and I'm speaking about the admin staff also, I'm speaking about the ancillary staff in our schools and learning institutions, your presence is important. And when you go, guess who goes with you? The resurrected Christ. You are not alone in the work that you do. None of us. We are not alone. The challenge is to exercise our faith, our belief that Christ is risen from the dead. But life is hard. And when life hits us, as it did the disciples when Jesus told them, and according to the Gospel of John, Jesus told his disciples three times, I am going to die, but on the third day I rise again. But yet when he was suffering, when he was on the trial with Pontius Pilate, when they nailed him to that cross, many of his disciples deserted him. Where was their faith? Where was their hope? They looked at their circumstances the way some of us looked at the empty glass and saw no hope. Glass is useless. But no. Christ buried in that tomb reminds us not to keep our focus only on the hardships that we go through and the difficulties we are experiencing in our families, in our communities, in our churches, in our workplaces, on the playing field, wherever. Let's not settle for what we merely see in front of us, but can we see that there is hope though the glass is empty? Yes, it is frightening the way this world is unfolding. And hard as we may try, many of us in your own home, your own family where you have experienced death or severe illness, life changes for you from one morning you wake up giving God thanks and by midday the doctor says you have cancer, the doctor says your loved one is dying, or you hear of the death of a child. And the glass, the empty glass look like this one dash away. But in a world where relationships have continued to be broken, some of us have young people, our children, grandchildren who have gone astray of God's ways, some addicted to various substances. As a nation, as a Caribbean region, we face a Haitian refugee crisis and a Haitian civil war crisis. 
as a world, we know of the war in Eastern Europe and in Gaza. And let me click on the JP again. You have, your issues are many. Migration of teachers. Teachers want to just give up. They can't take it no more. The decline of right morals and standards of behavior in many of our schools among students, parents, and new teachers. But the glass, the empty glass, if we look with the right eye, but um, the late Canon Early God is saying, Easter eyes, to see the empty glass, the emptiness of life, and say, there is hope. I guess that's why we're still celebrating your existence. There is hope, and the JTA are one symbol of hope for this nation. Everything's overwrite, we know that. Minister, don't treat in the right and when they don't treat minister right. If I may dare say. But that's fine. You see, the problem is not that we buck heads, you know. The issue is how we resolve the issue. The call is not the same. As I said to the congregation, if God made all of us identical, what a boring world it is. So nothing wrong with the conflict. It's how we deal with it. And Christ is here to say, guess what? In the conflict, we dare as dope. So what are our expectations for Easter Day, friends, and for this Easter season? Come to a service to sing some nice familiar hymns, hear a hopefully nice sermon, bring friends and family, celebrate 60 years of work of uniting and serving in this nation, and then we go home back to our hard lives with little or no joy in our hearts. Why? Because we're still looking at the empty glass without hope. Or can we go back with joy, hope, inspiration in our lives, knowing that yes, the glass might be empty now, but there is a God who will fill it Amen. if we put our trust in his ways, his teachings. Let us leave here with a song in our hearts, with a word in our heart, with a resolve to press on, to fill that empty glass in my neighbor's hand or in my student's hand or in my colleague's hand. Let's fill that glass with the hope of Jesus Christ who said to Mary when she met him in the garden, do not be afraid, I am here. Christ is present in Jamaica. Let's leave here with a song that we, we're going to sing this chorus later on. Because he lives and can face tomorrow. Whatever is happening in your business, in your home, in your community, in your organization, in your schools. There is a God, and this, when we lift the pastoral candle, one of the things I said, he's a God of the past, he's a God of the present. But he's also, because he lives, I can face the future. That's the God we celebrate this morning. That's the God which I dare say, invites us to work with him in bringing his message of love and hope to the world. And start just where you are. Start right where you are. Every child, every colleague, some teachers, you know this very well. When you go to work Monday morning, not this week, but hopefully not, you're not going to work this Monday. When school resumes, some will go back with that joy in their hearts, a smile on their face, and some are going to walk into that staff room and that those premises like the way to the world is on them. But if your glass is even half full, share that fullness. If the glass is empty, let the two of you come together and say, how can we fill our glasses today? Remind yourself. None of us, and the JT is not here by accident. St. Mark is not here by accident. God knew this moment would come. The question is, what are we going to do with this moment? The journey of every well, good, well-meaning teacher reminds me as I contemplated it. It's sort of what some biblical scholars call a type of the life of Christ. What happened to Jesus? He lived, he suffered, 
He died and he rose again. Teachers, educators, you're all somewhere in that spectrum. You know what I mean? Because sometimes your life full of suffering, don't no? yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give Lady Johnson a hard time sometimes. <laughs> and Mark is ready to take up the challenge. But there are times, though there is suffering, though you may be crucified by the parents or the teacher or the students, there is a resurrection. And that cycle goes on because your students give you hope nonetheless. There are many of, my, of our church here at St. Mark who you know yes, when your students come and say, Miss, you remember me? Right, Kristen? And they tell you something that you don't even remember you did or said. There is always hope. There is a resurrection. And your vocation, it speaks of not just a job, but it ought to be a ministry for the good of all. If you are teaching solely for yourself, you are missing God's will for you. If you are teaching just to go play with the supermarket and my bread and butter, you are missing the point. Get out of it and find something else. But if you are in it, for the good of this nation, the good of a life of another student, the good one. Is it, is it Taurus Riley who said, careful how you treat the little children? Tony Riley, thank you. I'm glad you know. Just testing you. <laughs> careful how you teach the little children. One might be your doctor, or could be your prime minister, could be your minister of education. You never know. So careful. You're not here by accident and God has you here for a purpose. So I say in the context of the 60th anniversary of the JTA, big ups to all of you. Big ups to Minister William. Big ups to the JTA and all your, your members far and wide across this nation. Big ups to the students whose lives you influence, their parents, their home, and their communities. Because your reach has no boundaries in us. Because God takes what you have and multiplies it. Just like he fed the 5,000 or the 4,000. And the same goes for every business owner, every employee, every retiree. And I thank God for retirees. Because their work, their influence continues. And you have had to draw on retired teachers from time to time, haven't you? Yes. But Jesus is still the pattern we follow. The ultimate example for the good of others, for the good of your work, your, your clients, your students, parents, your communities, the good of this nation. God, Jesus rose from the dead for the good of all humanity. And so friends, Easter is a time of hope. It's a feast day of hope. Renewal of our spirits. The rekindling of faith for those of us who are saying my glass empty. It no longer good. It's a feast day for which we encourage each other. And remind, remind ourselves the glass can be filled. And it can be shared. So friends, don't despair if your glass is empty. It means two things. One, you have drunk from it. But it means you can put something in it to, to, to share with somebody else. So the empty glass, like the empty grave, is a reminder of the presence of God, our resurrected Lord and Savior. So today, friends, we celebrate Jesus, our risen Redeemer and Savior. Hope that he offers means we can face tomorrow with boldness and confidence. Why? Because he has all our future in his hands. So let us with one voice. This morning, in all that we do here, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. Come on.
our movement ministry. Amen. At this time, we're going to now carry out an act of affirmation, of renewal, of hope. And I'm saying this to warn my JTA visitors. We're going to have a renewal of our baptismal vows. And what that speaks to is pretty much why we believe in Jesus Christ. And those vows will be done. And then I'll be walking through the congregation sprinkling with holy water. So if you don't want to make up with us, or you're here, find some coverage. Or you're not escaping the holy water of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, in our prayer book, we turn to page 263, I think. Will you persevere in resisting evil 
and repent whenever you fall into sin. Amen. Will you be a witness in your daily life to God's saving work in Christ? Amen. Will you seek and serve Christ by loving your neighbor as yourself, remembering that every person is loved and valued by God? Amen. Do you put your whole trust in His grace and love? Amen. You may be seated. Um, let's say, let's say, say 170, 170. <coughs> All of it. During this time, I've been walking around with holy water to sprinkle.
Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. May this declaration sound not only in these walls, but touch the lives of all we meet. And forever be the truth we speak. When our faith stands at the grave grieving for a stone that's rolled away, forgive us. When our faith is short of understanding, though the truth is there to see, forgive us. When our faith, beset by doubt, sees no further than an empty tomb, an empty glass, forgive us. Bring to mind the cry of Mary, I have seen the Lord, and grant us faith to believe. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all the precious children in this world. We know they mean so much to you. Give them a passion for the world around them. I pray that every child discovers their unique talents and gifts and help us all to do all we can to give them a good start in life. Keep them healthy and help them to thrive. I thank you that you know every hair on their head, when they rise and when they fall. Watch over our children and keep them safe. Bless every pair of hands that works to protect children and increase their efforts in Jesus' name. Amen. God of love, thank you for every teacher that notices a child's special gift. Thank you for teachers who are listeners and gentle guides. Thank you for teachers who are loud and expect much and love enough to demand more. Thank you for the special teacher each one of us remembers. God of mercy, sustain teachers who give everything they have. Strengthen teachers who assume the blame for so many problems beyond their control. Help exhausted teachers rest. God of strength, encourage teachers to care and inspire them to nourish. Motivate teachers to keep on learning just for the fun of it and to make learning enjoyable for children. God of justice, we thank you for organizations that help and support teachers in their special calling wherever they teach, and whatever obstacles they must face. Bless the educators who are expected to accomplish the miracle of education, despite the obstacles, and who know how to comfort children and persevere when miracles don't happen. We praise these things in the name of your Son or Lord and great teacher, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue on 4B on page 107 in our prayers. 4B. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that they may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. 
Father of all mercies and comforts, send your Holy Spirit to refresh and renew your holy and beloved people. May the members of our annual synod clothe themselves continually with and seek your way together. Through their work, may the faithful be purified and strengthened in the Spirit to spread and follow the gospel and bring Jamaica to Christ. Above all, bind us together in love of Jesus Christ and your word. Make your church a means of consolation, reconciliation, and healing in Jamaica and the world. We pray, dear God, for the needs. Lord, we take this moment. Seek, search, look, dear God. Open our hearts. If there be any need, the Lord, remove it. If there be any good, bring it to our God. I ask each person here to just take a moment to pray. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will, and the good things which we dare not, or when our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Our worship continues on page 123, the prayer book to the end of Pentecost. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this moment of silence, let us confess our individual sins and shortcomings to Almighty God ask and receive His forgiveness. Let us now together confess our sins using form B. Page 124. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we are. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may in your and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. May I invite us all to stand who are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And you may take your seat. We have a presentation by our Sunday school.
St. Mark and all your saints, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him, from whom all good things you come. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise.
for the distribution of Holy Communion. First, we invite persons who have been baptized in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are welcome to share in Holy Communion if you wish. If when we come, you receive the body of Christ, and then the blood of Christ is available for those who wish to drink from the cup. If you wish not to drink, having received the body, you may return to your seat. We will not be dipping or tainting the body. You will either drink or not. But our friends, our visitors, you are welcome to share in Holy Communion if you so desire. The ushers will give direction.
you weren't with us. Good morning, everyone. First off, honestly, I want you to give the Sunday School a round of applause. And I think you will agree with me that a teacher has to be in the mix somewhere there. A teacher has to be present. Let me acknowledge Reverend Father Michael Elliott and other members of the clergy. And I want to say to you, Father, thank you for your lovely and inspirational message. And I have to believe as well that there is a teacher within you somewhere. <laughs> thank you for reminding us that we are not alone in the work we do that the empty tomb gives us hope and that the glass may be empty now but there is a God that can fill it. Let me acknowledge as well our Chief Education Officer Acton, Mrs. Terry and Thomas Gale, our Regional Director, Mrs. Sophia Forbes Hall, and all the other members of the Ministry of Education and Youth. Let me acknowledge Mr. Leighton Johnson, President of the Jamaican Teachers Association, Mr. Mark Smith, eagerly awaiting to be present. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mark Nicely, Secretary General, Mr. Clayton Hall, Deputy Secretary General, members of the JTA's General Council and Executive members of the congregation, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he is. I am delighted to worship for the first time in the St. Mark's Anglican Church in the parish of Manchester, and it's the parish church as well. Our Heritage Foundation that keeps the records said this church was completed and consecrated in 1820. It is constructed of stone, and in the late 19th century, the chancel and the timber clerestory were added and the tower was raised. Of course, I had to look up what is a chancel. And it says a chancel is a part of a church near the altar, reserved for the clergy and the choir, and typically separated from the nave, which is the central and principal part of the church, by steps or screens. So I, I, I should have been doing concert, <laughs> nave, you know? Anything else you just <laughs> Or let me say, a teacher taught me to be curious, to ask questions, and to do research. And this morning, I want to say, God bless all of our teachers. Amen. It is a great pleasure to bring greetings at this service of worship and thanksgiving on this Sunday. I am especially delighted to address you on the eve of this year's Jamaica Teachers Association 
Education Conference as we celebrate the association's sixth year anniversary. First, may I extend the heartiest congratulations on this milestone, the JTA's six decades of advocacy on behalf of its members and the education sector in general is noteworthy in its emphasis on improving academic outcomes of our student population. And believe it or not, we have the same aim. The Ministry of Education and Youth and the Jamaica Teachers Association. We want to see happy teachers in our classrooms and brilliant children streaming out of our schools into tertiary or into the world of work. So we are aligned in any way that we look at it. Thank you, Mr. President, for your collaboration over this year, over your tenure, because you understand that we stand on the same side. We have the same goals, the same aim for our children and our teachers in Jamaica. This year's conference theme, Full Steam Ahead, Advancing Digital and Future Skills, reinforces the importance of coordinating policy, programs, and the provision of resources to address the diverse needs of students. The Ministry of Education and Youth applauds your commitment and dedication. We also welcome this week's annual conference as this course often helps to inform changes in policy development. This is a wonderful opportunity for stakeholders in the education sector to discuss new perspectives based on contemporary global development and to determine how best to implement changes where applicable. The government of Jamaica is fully committed to implementing STEAM education in Jamaica and is well advanced in implementing a number of initiatives aimed at closing the digital divide among schools, students, and teachers, improving schools administration and management systems, enhancing teaching and learning through capacity building and quality improvement, as well as in infrastructure development and ICT support, among others. At the same time, under the Education System Transformation Program, the STEAM School Project is designed to catapult the National Strategy for Education Development through the mainstreaming of STEAM education at the secondary level. We believe that this project will contribute to the national development goal of achieving world-class education and training through the advancement and the mainstreaming of STEAM education the integrating of technology, as well as improved school infrastructure at the secondary level. At the Ministry, we also continue the work on implementing the recommendations of the Jamaica Education Transformation Commission. We are advanced in a number of areas, but let me say, as we look back at the past 60 years with gratitude for what has been achieved, and to the future for what can and must be done. I am confident that with your dedication and hard work, we can overcome any challenges that may come our way. Together, we, the Ministry of Education and Youth, the government, the JTA, we can build a world-class education system that empowers our children to thrive and succeed in an ever-changing world. Thank you again for your tireless efforts and dedication to the education of our nation's youth. I'm proud to stand with you as we work together to shape the future of Jamaica through education. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and I'll remember this Sunday for a long time to come. Thank you.
Nathan Johnson, did you see Johnson here? Oh, uh, yeah, I've never introduced you to her. <laughs> Just say, you know, please. We will correct, especially when Mark takes over, you have a time. Mr. Nathan Johnson. <laughs> Host Minister, Father Michael, and other members of the clergy. Honorable Faber Williams, Minister of Education and Youth. President-elect, Mr. Mark Smith, and in absentia. Immediate past president, Mrs. Lasonia Harrison. Dr. Mark Nicely, Secretary General, Mr. Clayton Hall. Deputy Secretary General, past presidents of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Dr. Garth Anderson, President of the Caribbean Union of Teachers, Chief Education Officer Acting, Mrs. Perian Gale Thomas, Mrs. Sophia Forbes Hall, Regional Officer and other officers within the Ministry of Education, Parish and the District Association Presidents. Colleagues all, members of the media, sisters and the brothers, good morning. <laughs> April 2, 1964 was a significant and defining day in the annals of Jamaica's history. It was on that day that five organizations that provided advocacy for educators across our country merged into this robust and well-defined movement known as the Jamaica Teachers Association. An institution with a mission and a mandate steeped in industrial relations and professional development. For me, accomplishing 60 years signals the end of an era and the beginning of a life of relaxation. For the Jamaica Teachers Association, 60 years represents resilience and strength, as well as the commitment to remaining true to our established mandate and mission utilizing the current and moral conventions aligned with global standards and the trends. As we assemble in solemn reflection and the celebration, we are reminded of the rich legacy and the enduring impact of six decades of dedicated service to education and the nation building. Since our inception, the Jamaica Teachers Association has been at the forefront for advocating, for the, for advocating rights, welfare, and the professional development of our educators across our beloved island. Today, as we commemorate this significant milestone. We pay homage to the visionaries, the trailblazers, the stalwarts and the champions who have paved the way for our collective progress. Their unwavering commitment, tireless efforts, and the steadfast resolve have shaped the very fabric of this association, empowering generations of educators to fulfill their noble calling with excellence and distinction. At the heart of our association lies a deep-seated commitment to the principles of equity, inclusivity, and social justice. We remain steadfast in our resolve to ensure that every teacher, regardless of background or circumstance, 
is afforded the support, resources, and the recognition they rightfully deserve, even when no one else does it. As we embark on the next phase of our journey, let us reaffirm our unwavering commitment to the ideals and values that have guided this institution, this movement, the Jamaica Teachers Association, to this point. Let us continue to stand united in our mission to empower, inspire, uplift, and mold the minds and hearts of the students entrusted in our care, empowering our teachers, our members, to do the best they can at all times. This is a grand occasion, 60 years. I am humbled that in my tenure, I am witnessing this moment in history in the Jamaica Teachers Association. Past presidents, we have stood on your work. You have dedicated your life, your passion, and your unwavering commitment to ensuring that this association continues to grow from strength to strength. Your tireless efforts and your selfless service have been the bedrock upon which our association stands, and through your collective strength and the solidarity, we will continue to shape the future of Jamaica's education sector. As we give thanks for the blessings of the past and look forward to opportunities that lie ahead, may this, the church service that we, we experienced today, I hope it was a beacon of hope and unity as well as renewal for all who experience this. May it inspire us to rededicate ourselves to this noble cause of education and to strive for excellence in all we do. After all, we are all Jamaicans and we desire a nation that holds true to its principles, the principles of love, of peace, of camaraderie, and of solidarity. At this juncture, it is necessary for us to remember our colleagues in the war-torn neighboring territory of Haiti. Let us pray that good sense will prevail and in the end, the teachers of that nation, the people of that nation, that nation will once again enjoy a long-lasting period of peace, a peace that surpasses all human understanding. May the spirit of camaraderie and the solidarity that defines our association continue to guide and inspire us for years to come. Long live the JTA. Let us continue to unite and serve. join me here. The Jamaica Teachers Association views the church as a partner in education and in nation, nation building. We appreciate the fact that we were able to worship with the parishioners of St. Mark today. It is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Day. What a fitting day to celebrate Jamaica Teachers Association 60th anniversary. And it's 
that in mind, we present to this church a token of our appreciation and to show solidarity in terms of growth in education. We thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, members of the JPA. And this is certainly goes to our own education scholarship fund here at St. Mark. Thank you. I met your wife. Mr. Nice, please come. You're in the French church. Mr. Nice, we had a few announcements and then friends. I have a few and then we'll close up. Uh, Reverend Michael Elliott, may I, may I have you? Launch 
today, I pray your indulgence for 60th anniversary calendar. And on the screen, what you have is the cover of the calendar. And I just ask that they just take me through the pages and I just tell you what they are. Please, uh, can we go to the next page, please? All right, so the, the our calendar runs from April of one year to March of the, the following year. You need. But the first stage will carry all of our presidents that have served the, the organization for the life of the organization. If you go to the next page. But the next page will show the Secretary General, Mr. Morrison. Yes, there it is. The Secretary General that has served, and you will see the duration of your tenure. And if we go to the next page, that is uh, the JD Tan, which is our diaspora network. Um, and they are represented there. They are the major sponsor and uh, facilitator of many of our programs, locally and international, internationally. The next page will show the entire cadre of the JTA staff and their positions, etc. The next page, uh, we do have a publishing house uh, where teachers who have the ability to write or desire to attain, acquire the skill, are nurtured and scaffolded and are able to publish uh, books to contribute to the, the educational material and also to earn. And then the next page carry all our regional offices and our regional officers and there's a little story um, about each. It carries Excelsior High School which is where we had our first um, ceremony and it carries uh, Miss Pop, which is significant for the JTA. And again, you'll hear more about that. And then the next page, we have a trailblazer series where we identify trailblazers in the JTA, and it's a book. And we have captured some of those um, individuals in the trailblazer. And then we move on to the CUT, which is the umbrella organization for teacher trade unions in the Caribbean region. And fortunately for us, it is now headed in terms of its presidency by our own Dr. Gar Anderson, and we have all the different officers of the CUT. And then we move to the next page, which is EI. EI now is the global umbrella group for the Jamaica for education unions across the world. And we are represented there through our own trustee, Nadine Malloy, who is a member of the EI board. And that is captured there. And then, of course, we move to the next page. We are affiliated with many, many unions over our lifetime. Um, and all of them, as far as we can recall, are listed and accounted for there. And then we move to the next page, which is the JTA family tree. It speaks to how we have grown. This page was um, done up by our trustee and past president, Mr. Patrick Smith. He's entitled our historian, our lawyer, and a great resource of the Jamaica Teachers Association. And then we move to, uh, this one will be interesting for you, you know, we're in the headlines a lot. And so what we did was to do a collage of various headline stories that um, over the 60 years that the JTA would be involved in. And you see many familiar faces there, including Mr. Park, um, you know, and several other individuals in that collage. And I think it ends with the list of our activities. So today, we are asking our president to make a presentation to the church um, of the calendar.
Right, and not to worry, several will be given out later on in this service. We also will have a bookmark for everybody who is here today. It carries a couple of good information, but it also carries all the activities that will happen for the evening. All right, so just taking you through a short story of the 68th up to now and giving you some insight into the future. So we started our meetings, a committee was a committee agreed on by the General Council of November 2022 and its persons were named and um, approved and we started our meeting in January of 2023. The first thing that we had to do was to determine the theme and the theme for the 60th anniversary celebration is preserving the legacy, remaining relevant for the future. That theme was ratified at our March 2023 General Council, and I keep saying the General Council it is the highest decision making body outside of Congress. And there are a couple of activities that we have gone through so far. We launched the 60th anniversary celebration on February 30, 2024, and that launch is live, or you can watch it anytime you want on YouTube. And then we had a pre-conference activity, which was the women's conference held at Jamaica Pegasus. And our keynote speaker was Rebecca Pringle, the president of the National Education Association, NEA USA. Just to say that that organization is the largest teachers union in America, having its in excess of 3 million members. And then, of course, we started the distribution of our 60th anniversary pin on March 24, 2024, and that has gone well. Several persons are pinned, and we'll continue to pin individuals um, as time progresses. Of significant importance, we launched our new website on March 27, 2024, and that website now has significantly improved abilities um, to operate a function, to engage, and to relate to our members. And here we are today at our Easter, um, the church service, and we are moving tomorrow, day after tomorrow, to our education conference. That's our 60th anniversary education conference, sometimes referred to as the Easter conference, I think now will be referred, referred to as our anniversary education conference and in that conference we are going to have a significant activity on our birthday the wednesday which is the anniversary lecture and the keynote speaker there is professor emeritus the honorable errol miller ojcd phd and he is renowned to be one of the more excellent speakers historian uh, in Jamaica that we know. And just in closing, um, in terms of future activities, I'll stop at May, where we will have our Education Week activities, and that will be launched with the proclamation by His Excellency, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Allen, and that will be on April 30th. On May 5th, we have our National Church Service, and then on May 6th, we'll have the Read Across Jamaica Day, and we'll hear a lot more about that, and we expect everybody to participate. And then we'll have Teachers Day on May 8th, where we celebrate our teachers, and on May 9th, we'll have our Helen Stills Professional Day. And for the rest of the week, we'll have, have other activities that we will engage in. So these are the announcements, and we simply we are hoping and praying and would appreciate if you join with us as we go through the year, as we celebrate the legacy of the past. We honor our forefathers. We recognize that we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us and we seek to continue to advance the cause of education in Jamaica that we love. Thank you. Three marks in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say Mark, we don't mix up. Mark and Mark. <laughs>
but welcome again everyone and other visitors who are with us here at St. Mark. Can you just stand? We're not going to call out your name. But other visitors other than the JTA? That's Stephen, right? Yeah, I remember the name. Where is Heather? Oh, Alice and Nicole's sister, where is she? Oh, I don't want you to stand out. Okay. All right. Welcome to you all. I'm glad to have you here at St. Mark. <laughs> and friends, I'm not going to go down this song, you know, the boat of dancing. So St. Mark's um, family, I will really talk next Sunday, okay? You can't have a minute of education and you're hearing our secrets. <laughs> all right? So we'll talk next week. But a big thank you to everyone for all the work done through Holy Week. From Palm Sunday last week, thank you, my St. Mark's family, for all the work, the efforts, and we have our flowers and plants this morning, just like the garden with the empty tool. Thank you so much, and so many others to give thanks for. We're not going through that list this morning. I draw your attention, friends, to the notices in your order service. Mr. Ashley spoke about the printing service of the JTA. They produce the order service this morning. And we thank you for providing for us. <laughs> Our friends, please take note of all the notices. And the members of the JK, if you're in Mandeville tomorrow, stop by here. We have a cookout at 10. You know, our brotherhood, our men's fellowship having a cookout, and the young people are selling baked stuff. So feel free to come and um, join us in the fellowship. And they're inviting us to fellowship in the church hall afterwards for those who can stay. Oh, it's not CTC. Oh, yeah, okay. They have moved to CTC. So, yeah, that's why Mr. Nice, the even the nice gentleman he is, has provided refreshments through the JT for those who can join them at CTC this morning. And members of the church, remember this week, like the JT, they're having a conference this coming week. The church has its annual synod. And so the clergy will be away this week, and our online activities will be postponed until the following week. We ask your prayers to the one thing for Sister Boxdalene Kaiser, her daughter is doing um, surgery this week. We pray for her, for her, and the other members. The list is in our shut-in list. In the newsletter, please remember your prayers for our people. Pastor Oliphant, welcome. I'm glad to have you. Um, our MP is not present this morning. But friends, I wish for you and your families and loved ones a blessed, peaceful, safe Easter as this week unfolds. Children are on holidays. Some of them have exams studying for teachers are just wicked. And, and so on. But we pray for our kids, and I pray for you all that the week will be a blessed one, a good one, and for the JTA, may your conference be a productive and progressive one. I thank you again for your patience. If I'm forgetting anything, please forgive me. But I invite us to stand for the blessing and the closing gift.
love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.